My computer's beeping for no apparent reason. Live. We're live. Hello and welcome, everybody. Uh, we're live with Duda. <laughs> Just going to kick it off right there. <laughs> Yes, Take it welcome. away, Peter. <laughs> Thank you, Nick Ranger. Welcome to the this uh, Australian Duda webinar. Uh, today is such an important topic, semantic topic planning. And we're here with two very special SEO industry people, Dixon Jones and, and Peter Mead. The, the, co <laughs> the co-host, Nick Ranger. <laughs> and um, so... That's uh, let's let's get into the introductions. I'd like to introduce Nick Ranger, the co-host. Nick Ranger, SEO extraordinaire, is an award-winning senior technical SEO specialist at Dijon Marketing, and the co-director of the SEO Collective. Welcome, Nick. Howdy, Hoodley. Lovely to to be here. Um, and it's it's an honor and a pleasure to talk about um semantic seo with with such incredible minds <laughs> terrific yeah so I, I, Gibson jones i don't know I, i'm in the wrong place obviously I <laughs> incredible is a great word to use you know <laughs> not, on oh, me. Man, you, not on me you guys are so humble you guys are so humble <laughs> <laughs> So, Dixon, I do need to introduce you. Um, I, I consider you as a SEO OG. Um, you're an award-winning, uh, multi-award-winning SEO speaker <laughs> and, and an entrepreneur uh, who has helped to build the internet marketing industry for over 20 years. And um, Dixon is currently an investor and CEO of Inlinks.net, which is the first entity SEO tool set that's built from the ground up around its own knowledge graphs and NLP algorithms. That's fantastic. Welcome, Dixon. So you didn't read that at all, did you, Peter? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, it's something I prepared a little earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I, um, thanks for, thanks very much for having me. It's uh, it's early in the morning here in uh, Blighty, so uh, um, mm. I've got my coffee. I'm ready to go. Uh, let's see where we go. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us in the morning for our Australian audience. And before we, I know you've prepared uh, some slides, yeah. which we're really keen to, to find out and learn more. But uh, before we do, Nick, did you want to um, perhaps have some comments about semantic and, and maybe uh, let's warm us up on this topic before Dixon dives in? Yeah, sure. Um, what can I say about entities? You know, you've got your entities, you've got your attributes, we've got the semantic relationships. Um, entities, you know, they're described by identifiers and particular characteristics, which is those attributes, or those properties. Um, and we've got like the identifier, the URI, which usually consists of a sequence of numbers and used by machines to identify what that entity is and how humans can be able to recognize that according to their characteristics, which is a really bunch of fancy words, but <laughs> this is why I absolutely love the work that Dixon is doing because he takes these really, really complex things and makes it really quite simple for us and be able to scale this up really nicely because when we look at this, this is really the, the, the difference of thinking. Um, when I was writing this post, I was trying to think about like the shift of thinking and I kind of likened it to like, if you look at keywords um, versus looking at <laughs> the actual entity that it, it represents, it's kind of like looking at a grain of sand and not even realizing that you're on a beach. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited like about that. Uh, yeah, right. I, I I thought it was a bit clever. <laughs> it's very so, philosophical. And if you think stealing it isn't beneath me, you're completely wrong there, Nick. <laughs> oh, you can take it. It's all yours. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it, Pete. <laughs> all right. Well, we uh, we love grains of sand and we love being at the beach. So, so Dixon, <laughs> life's a um, beach. <laughs> we, we would love to. Uh, obviously, you know, there's no beach around us at the moment. So. Uh, the next best thing is for us to dive into this highly technical right. topic. Dixon, you've, I've heard you talk about this stuff a lot, and I'm just so happy to continue this conversation 
uh, with myself and and Nick. So please yeah. uh, take it away and and let us know what's happening. All right, yeah, I'll be I'm delighted, and, and I'm glad that you think I'd try and bring it down to something simple. I, I, I and I do I, absolutely, <clears throat> and I have to because I can't understand it when it's talked about in you know in in uh, in sort of academic terms. Uh, I was at an academic conference. Well, I was supposed to be at an academic conference in New York uh, in March. I got COVID, of course, so I couldn't get on the plane. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I did it virtually. But, you know, the way that they describe things is just too far away from reality to to have practical use. And that's the same in a lot of uh, a lot of research, I think. So uh, I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out and, and translating <laughs> it into words I understand, you know. And by the way, you know when you're in with a tech SEO when they start saying URI instead of URL. <laughs> Hey, uh, right. Enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we uh, can we dive into um, to, to my slides? So uh, Let's we, do we're, we're going to be talking about um, uh, a, a different way of looking about uh, content planning, or you know, as 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 most people call it, keyword research. Um, <clears throat> I'm calling it content planning. Um, as you'll see by the time we get to the end of this, it's not so appropriate to call it all keyword research. But the purpose of what I've got here today is to hopefully get people to understand exactly how Google sees content as a set of entities, a related entities, and, and how you should see your own content in that in that way. Um, and then also explain how entity SEO uh, approaching, you know, planning uh, from uh, an entity base basis instead of a keyword basis uh, is better. And uh, oh, we got somebody from from Italy in as well. Hello. Uh, also, uh, we're going to learn how to optimize our content using knowledge graphs instead of keywords, using topics instead of keywords. So let's dive on in. And um, this, uh, my slides don't show at the top. That's uh, that's. But we, we, I'll just explain anything that seems to not appear quite on the top. Who who is this, and why should you care? Yes, I'm I'm Dixon. Um, the other thing that you haven't mentioned is I, I wrote a book, Entity SEO. <laughs> Uh, moving search from strings to things. It's not a very long book. If you can't afford the two dollars on Kindle, uh, then it, most of it's free on the Index.net site as well. Um, so it's not it's not out there for the money. It's uh, it's it's out there for me trying to literally get these ideas uh, down into uh, into into print, uh, so I could understand them. Uh, anyway, the uh, the th these are a few graphs, not all from 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 our company. So people and don't you don't have to use our technology to get this kind of stuff. But it, it doesn't happen for every site. But if you so start moving from you know a keyword approach to uh, a topic based approach and an authority based approach, then these are some of the results from from three different case studies which are, are up on on the site as well. So they can have an impact and. Um, the slides, if you if you talk, you send an email to talk at Dixon Jones with planning in the title. If you want the slides, then um, then I'll send the slides through as well, if that's okay with Duda. Uh, and uh, and then, right, let's get into the presentation. So let's start here. So this is, um, I've got a new car, um, so I had to put it into a presentation. Uh, and that's uh, Martin. that is a Mustang. It's a Mustang oh, right. Mac E, electric Max <laughs> Mustang. The uh, the uh, the alarm just went off just now, so it's clearly not quite right. Uh, and um, uh, mm -hmm. and the, the the problem with these two these two entities is they're both called Mustangs. One being a wild horse and one being a car, of course. And the the issue is, if you're a search engine, well, if you're a user uh, and you're typing in Mustang on its own without any context. It's not clear which of these things you're referring to. And this happens quite a lot in the car industry. This is my other car. No one knows what this is going to be, but this is actually called a bulldog. It's actually called a pilgrim bulldog. So uh, if somebody types in a pilgrim bulldog it's, or, or, or a bulldog, it's, it's highly unlikely that they're going to be interested in this, this car. So, you know, whilst with Mustang, you might think that, the, that people are obviously going to choose the car and the brand. <laughs> with a bulldog, they're much more likely to choose the dog. A pilgrim bulldog gets a little bit more confusing, though, because, uh, because you know, what is the relationship between a pilgrim and a bulldog? Well, there's only one relationship, which is <clears throat> this. Uh, so it's when you start connecting the dots 
that it becomes obvious in our own human minds what's happening. You know, if you connect the dots with a picture of a, a, a car or a, or a, a horse, then it becomes obvious. If you start connecting a picture of a pilgrim and a bulldog, it looks really odd. It doesn't seem to make sense. It's uh, it, it's not 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 ideal. But the the other thing about entities is uh, an entity is just a la- uh, is, is is a thing, but a word is a label. All of these things mean the Eiffel Tower. You know and Frankly, I can't even understand some of these. This uh, that that one with really curly writing. That's uh, Sri Lankan, uh, by the way. That's uh, that's a beautiful writing. I like that. Um, <clears throat> but they all mean uh, the Eiffel Tower, uh, whether it's you know La Tour Eiffel or, or a big metal tower in Paris. They're all exactly the same thing. So one of the big problems with keywords is that. They are labels for entities and objects. And um, sometimes that label, a Mustang, Bulldog, can mean one of several different ideas. Sometimes, and almost always, an, an entity just uh, just has uh, loads and loads of different words. In fact, they always will because they have them in different languages. And it's not always easy to see the differences between entities either. So this is a bunch of different representations of New York. Uh, all in all in sort of graphical form from you know the tube map to the uh, to the sewer map uh, of 1735 which is covered up because I haven't got uh, any transitions on there to a vision they, they all show roughly where things are and how things far apart they're all maps um, they're all maps around things of New York but none of them are New York so it's not always easy to say what an entity is. You know, this is not New York that we're. This is a representation of different things within New York. So uh, that means that uh, Google is um, pretty uh, confused at times. So if I type in um, uh, 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 bulldog, then I'm going to get uh, get get. Um, uh, French bulldog in here is a, if I type in French, uh, for example, then I, I get French bulldog, probably because I was looking for French bulldogs or, or something beforehand. I don't know why bulldog came in there. Actually, I hadn't noticed that. But if I type in Sicilian, I get loads of things to do with pizza. If I type in French, I get all sorts of things like French bulldogs and French onion soup. If I type in French versus Sicilian, then I get the difference between Italian and French style. I get all these suggestions that are coming in. But then, you know, fourth one down there, I get you know, Sicilian versus French versus Cara Khan. Now, that is me because I'm a big chess player. And frankly, any chess player that heard French versus Sicilian would absolutely know that they're talking about chess at that particular point. And when, when you hit the results, all of the results are there because there's a lot of authority that has been written around the French you know, the French uh, opening or versus the Sicilian opening. So uh, it's um, it's very obvious when somebody really starts going down that authority that this, this kind of content becomes much more important than the French style versus the Sicilian style, if you like. So the question is, how is it that Google starts to disambiguate all of these, uh, these dirty signals from uh, queries, uh, from uh, from corpuses of, of text on the internet and uh, and how does Google know uh, why we're talking about a game of chess instead of style uh, or about a car instead of a horse and why does knowing this give your website a business marketing edge um, uh, gives your business a marketing edge and that's really what I'm diving into today uh, and then how to exploit it, hopefully. So what's a knowledge graph? You explained it in one way, Nick. Um, uh, I explain it this way. So this is a uh, a, a um, poster that was in a pub just before COVID uh, that I saw. And I thought, now I understand what a knowledge graph is. Uh, it is really, it's a collection of ideas. Uh, and they have a relationship between each other. So, you know, within, within lager, there's European lagers, there's German lagers, et cetera. And so... This pretty much for me is a, is a is as good a knowledge graph for beer as we're ever going to find, really. Uh, and uh, and ultimately, I, I I see knowledge graphs as just these kind of representations on the internet. Uh, I don't think you see it that much more. What I think is really interesting is that Google starts with a knowledge graph of ideas, which is you know an encyclopedia for, for with a bit of a database kind of feel to it, really. But then when it starts to read content. Uh, it uh, starts to see uh, 
um, ideas in in content and it extracts those ideas and says ah that idea is related to this entity in my knowledge graph this kgig t678 i've made these numbers up and uh so so essentially it can sit there and see a a, a small corpus of text and it can see uh, and it can map it into numbers because all those numbers are a representation of entities and ideas um and uh clearly if you're going to talk about everything under the sun fine you've just created yourself a, a new a new Wikipedia all in one page. But uh, but if you're going to start talking about ideas that are around uh, Mustangs, then it's going to have a very different pattern to it if you start talking about horses than if you start talking about cars. So, Dixon, Dixon yeah. can I just... Um, yeah. Because you're, you're, what you just mentioned then is really... I mean, you're already talking about the idea of relevant topics. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this, yeah. So this this is I think this is really it because I mean if if you and and also this 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 chart is also trying to show you clustering as well so there's you know a bunch of ideas in green a bunch of ideas that fit into the blue cluster a bunch of ideas that fit into the red cluster but this is not talking about the red the, sorry the, the green cluster is not talking about the red cluster or the pink cluster so these kind of ideas are also differentiate yourself from from other things it means that you're definitely not talking about horses of course there are some overlaps you know if you talk about horsepower you know it's it's not that's um that's that's uh common to uh talking about horses or talking about cars except when it comes to mm. electric cars we like to talk about torque uh but anyway that's a whole different story uh a talk oh there you go in my next <laughs> i'd obviously seen that so <laughs> so then anyway yeah so so then it, it obviously starts to become much easier as humans and uh, and and as and as uh, machines to see the differentiation clearly those different topics uh, it's, it now becomes really clear hopefully if I haven't if, if if what I've said has made sense so far it's really obvious that if you're talking about stables and the wild and animals um, then that's a completely different um, thing to talking about talk electric and Ford even though you know you could be talking about you know the Mustang as a wild animal um, it's it's still should be well it does it does say that if you start talking about um describing the mustang as a wild animal then uh you may be confusing uh, the graph and you may actually be reducing your chances of get of reducing the confidence that a search engine has that you're talking about the car instead of the animal mm. so <clears throat> the point is um and, and so 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 using this is is important but yes getting those words like wild animal out there in in describing a mustang um is, is interesting because if you're going to have those words, if you if you put in Mustang and then look at all the words that are being talked about on all the pages that are ranking for Mustang, probably wild and animal are going in there. But so you if you were looking at it and analyzing it from a keyword base, you might say, yeah, I do want to put wild animal in there. But using keywords just because they're in a list of uh, of of uh, words around the content of the word Mustang. Is actually a huge mistake um, because mm. it's uh, it's it's going to be grouping your you're, you're going to see words that are out of context to your situation. Mm. So if you take all the words around the phrase Mustang, wild animal will be in there, whether you're talking about the car or the uh, or the animal. But horse will be in there, um, and hooves will probably be in there because some of those some of those pages that are authoritative around the concept of Mustang are talking about horses to put them in your own content, just because they're in the list of uh, content that's, that's ranking for the phrase Mustang is a big mistake. If you're trying to talk about cars, because you're, you're just, um, you're just polluting your own uh, pool of authority. So this is why you have to group these ideas into, into some kind of context. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. 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 Just um, on that, that you were mentioning about using keywords in your content simply because you've done some keyword research and there's volume for a certain keyword that happens to be related to what you think is your primary keyword. Yeah. It, and that, it, I mean, still, that, that seems, you know, from, from the history we've had as SEOs, that, that kind of seems like not such a bad idea, you know, from where we came from, you know, originally where, Oh yeah, here's your primary keyword. Here's your secondary keywords. Just pepper them throughout the page. 
Yeah, um, it's uh, it, it is. Uh, we th Nick, we think we think that you might be having an echo. I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to mute myself. Uh, so I, I. Yeah, and it's but but uh, it's it's obvious really when you think about it because Mustang is two very very different things, and clearly not everybody that types in Mustang is thinking about the version of Mustang that you're thinking about. So right at its start, it's like garbage in, garbage out, isn't it? You say right, there's a million people this week that type in Mustang. Well, what percentage of them are typing in Mustang because they're talking about cars? What percentage are talking about horses? Whatever percentage that is, the one that's not talking about what you're, 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 you, you want is absolutely diluting, you know, your, your audience. They're not going to buy a car if they're interested in a horse, you know, of that, we could be fairly certain. So, uh, and this happens all the time. Um, and we, we take these words, uh, and so sometimes it goes the other way, you know, so I see a lot of people I, or another example I use is house and home. You know, do you want house insurance or home insurance? Well, if you go on to, to Google and type in house insurance, oh, uh, it, it, it comes back in the UK or did when I was looking at it the other day um, with uh, home insurance in the results. So it's already worked out that a house and a home mm. are exactly the same thing. What the author writes doesn't make a difference. Um, it's uh, entirely the... Uh, uh, it's entirely the concept that's important rather than the the, the label that's used to use to to, to say it. Mm. So, just because um, keywords are used in your competitors' content doesn't mean to say you should use it in your content, uh, and they need to be grouped into uh, in, in, into it grouped together. So, there's a lot of tools to do it. This is um, href an HREF export uh, where they're grouping uh, keywords into um, parent keywords. So this is. Um, uh, I, I've, I've taken a, a, a. I've moved away from cars now because it's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, but I've stayed with the wild and gone to the Azores, which is a beautiful set of islands in the Atlantic. Probably not as as, as beautiful as some of yours off the Barrier Reef, but anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 go with the Azores. Uh, and so uh, so there's a you know you can get um, uh, keywords grouped. So so they'll they'll try and group the things. Semrash also do it. They're doing it through um, in the bottom of their their export. <clears throat> they've got um, spreadsheets, so they're grouping them by, you know, by Madeira and weather and travel and visits and flights to the Azores and stuff like that. So they've got those kind of things grouped. Um, so so the tools that are out there do group um, keywords and they have keyword volume. But the context and the intent are, are to my to my mind, the, the missing links in in the chain and I, I don't think that I, I think we've kind of tried to make some improvements on uh understanding what people why people are typing something in uh and uh and trying to get that context not just based around ideas but also ideas that are relevant to your own website and your own business so that's where we're going to dive into next so and I'm going to start with intent because I've got a huge problem with how SEOs understand intent. Um, and uh, the truth is that most SEOs uh, type in, you know, uh, um, say that intent is one of one of four or five things. It's either, you know, uh, search intent is either informational, navigational, transactional, commercial, or local. Even, even Wikipedia has these types of intent uh, out there. But um, that's really odd because you know that's those those types of ten, that little red line there. But this 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 blowout in their first sentence says that intent is about the identify identification and categorization of what a user online intended or wanted to find. That's nothing to do with transactional, uh, you know, five things. I mean, the idea that SEOs go wake up in the morning and say, right. I'm going to make sure that my uh, my website is a really good um, informational intent page or navigational intent page. Doesn't really help to sell a Mustang, uh, whether it's a car or a horse. Uh, so intent is is much more than those five ideas, and I've got no idea why. I think it was in some so, uh, a research paper, a Google research paper somewhere, that these kind of five ideas came out. But frankly, um, it's it's all. I don't know if we're allowed to say it on a podcast, but it's all bollocks, uh, really. Um, because uh, if you if you start with the Azores um, uh, and you start putting that into Google, Google says, "Okay, right, there's the Azores. Um, that is a region in Portugal, 
And then it comes out with a whole load of suggestions based around the islands, the holidays, mm. weather, whatever. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I've still got the horseshoe one. Oh, yeah. So the, uh, and, and if I started with, with horseshoes, then um, it's, it's even more rich in concepts and entities. You know, uh, I, you know, are you talking about horseshoe crab, horseshoe lake, horseshoe park? Horseshoe Falls or uh, Horseshoe in Warlingham, which is local to me. Um, it's not that local, but it was when I did the screenshot. <clears throat> um, and so, and so, you can see this blend of of, of keywords, results, and, and and entities just in the Google suggests um, suggestions up here. Um, and so, Google is trying to understand the underlying intent of the user at this particular point. And they're not trying to work out at this stage whether they're trying to buy something or learn about something. Uh, and I think that this. Is something that SEOs totally misunderstand. They just don't understand that you know intent is so much more than one of those four or five ideas. And the results that come back really reflect what Google knows. When you've just got a word like horseshoes, you haven't given very much information to Google about the intent. So it comes out with, a, in this case, a bunch of results that are uh, about um, uh, local results because that was local to where I was at the time in North Wales, uh, or and it's got a bunch of you know core results that are coming back, and it's got in the in the in this knowledge panel here two ideas about horseshoe. One is you know uh, a game uh, called horseshoe, uh, and one is probably the more traditional thing that goes on the foot of a horse. Uh, so these are the ideas, uh, and I think that understanding intent is where SEOs should should be really starting because your business. Only, only caters to specific types of intent. You ain't trying to sell that horse. Don't sell him a horse. Don't write about the horse. Don't confuse Google. Certainly, don't get a, a, a horse, horsey person to uh, to your website if you're trying to sell a car. So, building your knowledge graph means you're building a knowledge graph that is personal to you, personal to your business. You're creating a fingerprint of concepts and ideas that hopefully will suit a specific type of buyer or a specific type of person that is going to be interested very much in your in your uh, your your world so to speak so uh the next question is well how do you build your own knowledge graph that's that's right out there right you know that's you know the only people that build knowledge graphs are google and ibm surely uh so um it's actually it's actually not that difficult to build a knowledge graph. So we're going to go through one. We're going to build one in mm. three steps with a little bit of help from Excel maybe. Uh, and uh, so so the first thing is um, find authoritative content around a subject. So if you wanted to build a, a knowledge graph around um, Ford Mustangs, then take the 10 best pages for you know, Mustang, Mackie, Ford, you know, if the specific model of car that you want, find the best best reviews around those. Uh, don't take the pages that are about wild horses. If you want to build a knowledge graph around Mustangs and wild horses, fine, take the 10 best pa web pages for that. Then you've got to go through that and look at the underlying entities. So if we see, think of entities as anything that has um, a, a um, an article in uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, then you're in a pretty good place, really. So think about an entity as something that's got its own page in a dictionary or in an encyclopedia. And then tabulate the results um, so you can see uh, how, 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 how often you talk about things. So that then comes into a, a list of uh, a, li a list of entities. Now, it, it, it takes a long time to go and read 10 pages of content and break it down. And you're going to make and there's going to be human error, a lot of human error. But fortunately, there's plenty of tools out there, and they don't all cost money. So uh, Google has its own uh, NLP API. It's not very good, or rather the results that come back don't show as many entities as uh, as we see as humans. Um, I don't know whether that's on purpose or or, or not, but uh, we, we we test at Inlinks um, our, our own NLP against Google's, uh, and we reckon that Google only reports around about 15 to 20% of the entities on a page that, that, that we see as, as, as in links or you would that's see interesting. as a human being. That's very interesting because um, yeah. that's, that's definitely the, the tool that people talk about when they first start talking about semantic and figuring out the entities they're, they're yeah, looking well, at using that. It's, I think it's interesting as well. I and mean, if you go to um, to inlinks.net's homepage, there's a there's a resources tab. Oh, we're going to change the website next week because we've got the .com now. But anyway, uh, um, <laughs> and, and you go to go to um, uh, where's the research? I'll, I'll bring it up on the on the thing. So um, if that's all right, inlinks.net, mm. just, just so we know exactly where it is. Uh, resources. 
industry reports. So we've got these industry reports. So we've been tracking for years and years and years. Well, no, if you, no, for a couple of years uh, around different different phrases. Uh, we've been taking the, 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 the results and breaking it down into underlying entities and then running our entity analysis algorithm and Google's entity analysis algorithm. And on average, we, we've been seeing that they've only been getting 14.5%, um, 15%. In, uh, in real estate, it's much better. And that's because they're kind of really good at seeing um, brands and places. Mm. Uh, so yeah. real estate involves lots and lots of cities and towns, which are quite good at getting. Uh, and watches and jewelry are very uh, brand driven. So um, so th those those kind of work quite well. When you get to sort of things like tools and techniques, they're much worse uh, at uh, picking out entities because those are much more talking about entities sort of concepts, if you like. So um, mm. So, so you, you, but you can use Google's uh, NLP API. You can also use IBM. This is this uh, screenshot is IBM Watson, uh, and they break it down. Um, we also beat them. And the other one that's uh, well known is TextRaiser, who are a French company, uh, mm. and they're pretty good. They're pretty good. We 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 do beat them, but we try and beat them. And I'm sure they would argue that they beat us. So, you know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, so you know. But the point is, the point is uh, that. Um, uh, there are there are uh, plenty of tools that you can go to that will make that job of breaking down a page into its underlying topics a lot quicker than having to do it manually, um, and it's going to save you some time. Uh, and then the the idea here then is that you uh, can go through and have a look at you know a bunch of different web pages, whether the ones in the SERPs or uh, you could swap out ones in the SERPs for one pages that you think are authoritative, regardless of the SERPs. But the SERPs is kind of on the ones that Google thinks are good. Um, uh, but certainly get rid of the ones that are talking about horses if you want to have a car website. Uh, and then you merge it into one set of ideas. And you can see that you know one one some phrases are are discussed, some topics are discussed much more than another. So this is the output from uh, doing a, a topic analysis um, for the Azores, um, and uh, and so we can see that you know if you if you want to talk about the Azores, then yeah, things like um, islands and archipelago, and it's owned by Portugal, so Portugal and the Atlantic Ocean, these are things that are mentioned by all of the competitors. So uh, in in this representation, we, we we've taken the top ten websites for on Google in the UK for the phrase the Azores, and the concept of island is talked about on average five times by the competition. Uh, one of the competitors has talked about islands five, 15 times on the page. One of them's talked about three times on the page. So we've got a kind of high, medium, and low kind of uh, numbers here. So we can sit there and say, right, we probably need to talk about the islands and archipelagos more than we need to talk about climate or the earth, if you see what I mean, or lakes. So uh, very quickly, we build up a, a concept of ideas. But um, and you don't need... And you don't need um, anything uh, to do that, but obviously it can speed it up if you use, use some stuff, uh, use some some tools uh, to get those extract those entities quicker. But then what we're trying to do is create some very actionable recommendations. So this is the bit where we go to the to the to the next level, um, or we think we go to the next level. I, I, I invite the panelists to, to to say whether we do or not. So what we do mm. is we throw all those ideas back into Google Suggest. So you've got to sit on your computer whilst this is all happening, but we'll take these underlying entities, we put them back into Google Suggest. And you remember that, that, uh, that, that Google Suggest where we saw Horseshoe and you started seeing Horseshoe Falls and, uh, and, and all these different things about horseshoes and things. We can then mm. take those and then we can run our NLP algorithm into those and compare what, that's, what those ideas are uh, and because we now have our own knowledge graph, we can see whether they're close to what the business is already talking about and discard the ones that are irrelevant. So now we can go, right, you're talking about horseshoes uh, or um, we're going to go through all your content. You're talking about horses, not about the pub down the road. So therefore, we need things that are related to horses, et cetera. So we'll throw out things about you know the local results of Wallingham or whatever it may be. So now we're going to, um, on this particular example, uh, put all these ideas into Google Suggest, start building out uh, the suggestions that are coming out. We also hive off the ones that are questions as well. So when Google comes out with Google suggestion questions, we can pull those out. So best places to visit. And so you can build your FAQ pages out of here. But we can also discard all the ones that are irrelevant. So now we're coming back with a set of topic clusters 
And within that, another set of keywords. Yeah, we've got some volumes here, and and we we use you know the big the big boys for the, for these overall volumes. But really, I'm not so interested in these volumes. I'm really interested in the fact that uh, the Azores tourism statistics is something that you know people are interested in. Funnily enough, uh, but not as interested in as as uh, tourism guides. So I've now got a mm. section on my website, and I've got the underlying concepts I need to talk about. I've got the questions. And I got all this ultimately from Google's data. So I know that these are things that Google thinks are important as well. And okay. they're all related specifically to my own website and my own business. Can I, can I, yeah. Um, yeah, can I throw a spanner in or be a um, hypothetical, yeah, yeah, yeah. just a hypothetical devil's advocate? Because I'm not I'll, really I'll a devil's advocate. I'll get my coffee advocate. and just take the, but, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the question now. I mean, if we all if we all follow this process, whether it's using your tools or any of the other tools, yep, uh, aren't we all going to end up with the same kind of content? Absolutely not, unless you have no uniqueness to your business idea. So uh, the the um, so let's take uh, a hotel chain versus an airline. Right there, there's two very big differences between what those two businesses are trying to do. With people going to the Azores, for example, um, or uh, or if you visit Azores tourism website, um, I, I built this knowledge graph. In order to build this knowledge graph, I had to start with a um, with a website. Well, I started this with a, a keyword, but what we can also do is start with a business, so we can take the whole website. And I'll come onto that in a second, and show you how I build a very different um, uh, knowledge graph based on two different businesses uh, and, and what your businesses do uh, mm. and, and that that if there is no differentiation between two businesses then ultimately uh you're competing for exactly the same share of voice and and all you do is the more businesses that are exactly the same the more you're diluting the the market for it so the business mm. most businesses and most business research at least when i did my mba which i did recently because i you know, couldn't afford to do it when I was a kid. Uh, um, Congratulations, Dick. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Very good. Uh, yeah, um, it, it, it different product differentiation, regardless of SEO, is is the mantra. If you're going to be trying to develop your business, you've got to have product dis differentiation. You've got to have some kind of uniqueness to your business that is either hard to copy or um, or so so unique that no one else wants to copy it um, or so you know and, and 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 all of these are fine but you've got to create a barrier to entry of some sort and it could be a knowledge barrier to entry or it could be a product barrier to entry but um, but you have to have differenti a differentiator in your in your business um, and and so where you start if you start with just the phrase the azores and do this then yes we're all going to come out with the same information so you make a very good point how do you differentiate yourself and i'll come on to that in a second but before i do that i want to also bring you back to the to the uh, user intent layer so the other thing that we did very differently now and um, this has only been out for a few weeks uh is um instead of thinking that user intent is all about navigation transaction local whatever those five things were <laughs> it's all it's much it's much better to understand user intent using verbs so um when we started throwing all those ideas back into google suggest we started picking out the verbs so there are you know people that are trying to travel to the azores there are people trying to go to the azores make um i don't know what they're trying to make at the azores but i'd, I'd have to click on the make to be able to see the uh, the things within there uh, but uh, you know, uh, but uh, or pronounce the Azores. So people are trying to do different things around the Azores. So knowing the um, the verbs and grouping things by verbs is going to be very interesting because if you take something like home or house, are you trying to have you got a business that, that decorates a house, mortgages a house, buys a house, sells a house, um, shows your house, whatever you know these different things, or uh, or is uh, or is it about you know house in a um full house you know game of cards or something like that uh so uh so i think um uh breaking down user intent by verbs is a very interesting alternative way of looking at things because you can cut out the things that are not important to you and not important to your business pronouncing the azores may actually help you rank better for the azores but it won't necessarily help you sell tickets to the azores and google will have worked out that when somebody is trying to pronounce the azores they're in a very different place to whether they're trying to go to the Azores. Uh, and hopefully, 
Google won't ret return in the same the same results, even though the keyword is the Azores. Hmm. Uh, so so that means you can also automate schema. Probably not part of this presentation, so I'll just move on to for that and not go out there. But going on to the uh, to the um, to, to to the question that you had, why doesn't everybody do it, end up with exactly the same stuff? Well, they, they do if they just go with that. But, if, but now you can also internally link the entities. So this is where things start to differentiate because your corpus of authority um, is building up as you start writing this content and you start interlinking stuff uh, and you start, to, um, you start to show a search engine um, where your authority lies, in what particular aspect, pronunciation or travel. Um, mm. and, uh, and, and Google knows whether your site is about pronunciation or travel, uh, and it's going to start slanting your results based on the internal linking, uh, on the understanding of the, the, the website as a whole. Uh, but the best okay. bit of, of it is this bit at the site level. Because if we extrapolate this whole idea, and instead of building a knowledge graph around a keyword, we start building a knowledge graph around your business, mm. then we suddenly start to have that differentiation that is really important to, to this whole process. So if okay. we take a, a business in real life, this is Azores Choice, which I have no relationship to at all. I just, uh, I've always wanted to go to the Azores. So, I mean, you know, my wife doesn't, she thinks there's a barren set of islands in the Atlantic, but I, I think that looks pretty <laughs> pretty nice anyway uh and uh, so uh what i've done now is i've taken a knowledge graph not of the keyword the azores but a knowledge graph of um of all the pages on the azores site because these were the keyword re research reports from ahrefs semrush and inlinks for the azores and none of these are useful at the site level, particularly. We try to make this useful at the site level realize we needed to improve the product and so we started again and the reason is because you're starting with a keyword, but if you start with uh, and, and then and then and then crawl the ten pages that rank for that keyword, but if you start with your own web pages uh, and start crawling all of those and make a knowledge graph out of those, then you build a knowledge graph that is personal to your business. So take all of your pages, go through that same process of build, uh, getting out those entities, and then create a knowledge graph that is very specific to your business. Now. If you're going to be talking about French versus Sicilian and you're a chess website, it's going to be really markedly different to chess and uh, to French and Sicilian compared to uh, a style website. Uh, and so uh, we can then uh, do that. And then we can throw those entities back into Google Suggest. And that will expand that knowledge graph and come out with suggestions that Google is suggesting based on your business. Does that make that difference succinct and answer the question that you had earlier, Peter? Oh, yeah. Um, it does. I, I, um, I love this idea of, of building your own knowledge graph with your website. Uh, it's been, it's a long, it's a thing that I've thought about for quite a while, uh, since really, since Bill was, you know, sort yeah. of, uh, talking about this. Um, but yeah. you, and then, you and know, then taking it on to the next level of getting the suggestions tells us where to go next, right? So, okay, well, that's that's the cream on top there, isn't it? I'm hoping so. So instead of a, instead of this, so this is the Azores with the keyword research level, uh, what have we got here? Azores Travel Islands Adventure and a bunch of keywords. What I get now is this, which is, okay, uh, Azores Choice, right, we want to start talking about uh, things around the Azores uh, and then a bunch of keywords around the Azores and a thing around holidays and stuff like that. And then within that, we've got school holidays and stuff. So within within uh, uh, here, we've got Portuguese holidays, and they, these are all the Portuguese holidays because, of course, the Azores has Portuguese holidays um, as a, as a um, the public holidays. Uh, and so we start building a, uh, a, a keyword research that's based around suggestions that extrapolate from the existing business. Um, so now... Uh, you're building your site structure around your business, not somebody else's business. You're extending what you, what Google thinks is important um, uh, as the next steps for your your site. So if you're going to be talking about beer, maybe you need to talk about beer styles or beer mugs or, or whatever is going to be going to be there. And I'm pretty much near the end of the presentation. I, I'm the, I, I've, that's that's the that's kind of as you say the icing on the cake, um, going on to the next level. And I, and, it, and it really does start to help give your content planning some structure based around entities so if we go back to you know the title of the talk which was 
uh, along the lines of you know uh, content planning the semantic way or the topic way hopefully that demonstrates how we're trying to help people develop suggestions uh and, and so we think that seo is about matching topics and entities to real user intent um and we think that you can create your own ad hoc knowledge graph without any particular tools um but but scaling it needs at least an nlp algorithm because humans will make mistakes they'll see they'll see they'll 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 be blind to words in text that they're very familiar with uh, and they'll they'll miss things out and they'll read one page and pick it up and another page and not pick it up so at least a, a, an nlp algorithm gives some conformity to building that up um, but there's plenty out there um and then once you've got knowledge graphs um nlp uh, natural language and Pro programming and google suggests uh together can create better content around clustering ideas it can also create schema fast we didn't talk about it but it can it, it can internally link things very quickly as well um <clears throat> at least it in links hence the name uh and then uh, then uh, we can also plan content using this gap analysis of entities um as recommended by google suggest based on your existing content uh which is where i think the future of content research uh, and keyword research should be going, uh, and it should pretty much throw how many people typed Mustang into the search engine <laughs> out of the window. Um, and that's the slides, um, and you're the first people to see them. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it made sense. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. Right, we can go off the slides now. I think that's enough of me. Um, but talk at dixonjoes.com with planning in the title if you if you need them out there. I'm emailing you right now. <laughs> yeah you've you've probably got a recording you know i'm sure dude will give you the recording so it's uh, it's gonna be okay <laughs> oh <laughs> i got fomo already did it make sense and yes. is it, i think it, is it i think you? it definitely <laughs> makes sense um well it made sense to me um mm. i'm just very mindful that there are so many people out there that are like great i've listened to this i've loved this i've got a, like a handle of the concepts yeah but then they're looking at their pages and they've like like the sites maybe like got a ton of boilerplate content yeah and they've whoever has been building all this stuff has just you know kind of been blind at the wheel being like cool i'm just going to internally with this or i'm just going to create the content and they're kind of having to go back to the same people and then start to talk to them about this shift of thinking and how they're yeah. able to do it what do you sort of say to, you know, right. to an in-house okay. SEO or, you know, to someone what I working say to with them the team? Is, <laughs> it's like, I, you can, you've got this. plenty of places to go to cull that content. And you don't need to just take it off your website because you know, that's going to have political, you know, you've got to have some evidence to take it off. But what you can do is instead of analyzing your whole website, you can either go to Google Search Console and look at the best pages according to Google Search Console or your analytics or just your knowledge of the business and sit there and say, you know what? Frankly, we sell widgets, blue widgets and green widgets. We don't sell red widgets. We don't want a choice of widgets. We don't want all these, you know, how to how to wipe your bottom with widgets. You know, we, we kind of, you know. <laughs> uh, so, so all that stuff. We just take the, the important pages, uh, if you like, the money pages, um, and, and build the knowledge graph around that. So you don't have to build it around your whole website. Now, um, it's quite possible that you should, you know, delete all of that other boilerplate stuff off your website, but that's not mm. the topic of the, today's conversation. Um, another way of dividing it out, uh, for, for those that, that know me, I, I, I'm also a brand ambassador at Majestic and used to be a marketing director at Majestic. So I would I, I would take use, use flow metrics to, uh, <laughs> to, to, uh, to work out which pages are already important in, 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 the, in the greater, in, in, the, in the old sort of page rank uh, model uh, and, uh, and use those as, my, uh, as my, my seed set. But essentially, you're creating a seed set of content, usually out of your own business. If you haven't got a business yet, Maybe you need to take pages of website, the pages that you would uh, of your competitors that you aspire to be, and sit there and say, you know, I want, I, I want to, I want to um, sell this and um, make this and advise on this, and these are the three pages out there that are that are most important. Uh, but uh, uh, and and take those to build your knowledge graph, and then you're starting with the content from scratch. Um, but at that stage, you might as well consider taking your keywords, building an, a, a keyword research based on the top ranking pages for a particular phrase. Mm -hmm. Just don't put Mustang, say at least 
Mustang horse or Mustang car, so you get the right pages. So make sure make sure you you check your check your input before you before you go there. But but to to, to your point, then Nick, just don't just don't put every page into the knowledge graph that you're building. Put in the pages that are relevant for your business, not the ones that are relevant just because some SEO. 12 years ago when things were different <laughs> um decided to to try a keyword boilerplate for everything so. yeah because i think a lot of people are just like you know what we're just going to tackle this with volume we're going to write everything we could possibly write about this topic right. yeah we're just going to like you know punch her punch it all in but what they're not doing is think about the content hierarchy and yeah they're certainly not yeah. thinking from an internal linking perspective no so, and, and they're missing context at that point but, <laughs> but but they are right in that if if they have decided that they want to be an expert in a field they want to mm. they want to um as 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 our knowledge graph manager says you know flood flood the flood the service with authority on that topic but you know don't flood your authority yourself with authority on you know on, on another topic so uh, you know I, I i always i don't know i always come up with bill gates but bill gates is really <laughs> An expert on AIDS research, funnily enough, and uh, and operating systems, not so much on Beyonce, you know. And if he starts mm. talking about Beyonce, uh, you know, it, it, that doesn't make him an expert on Beyonce, you know. Uh, so he no, needs unless to unless he kept so, talking about it. No, but if yeah, and ultimately, <laughs> I he's a got fan of that particular beer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so so uh, yeah. so um so Dixon and also Nick, are we? How far down this track are we now? How far has the whole uh, the whole sort of world of semantic SEO gone? I mean, do we just completely, whenever we do keyword research and we look at the volume column, do we just completely ignore that? Or, or is this, or can we still look at topics and find that there are actually some of them are keywords and we need to know the volume and we have to have some? Or are we just going to go, no, nah, forget that. It's just all about topics, entities, you know, ontologies. Is that what we're doing? How far are we? Do you want to turn out Nikki? Nick or shall I? Well, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm more interested in what motivates a click rather than the, just like an arbitrary search volume. Which, to be honest, when you look at Search Console, I have some thoughts about search volume. Um, mm -hmm. Just like you know, things getting like so much time and attention and impressions. And then you look at the volume, it's like, this is like 10 searches per month. Like something yeah. just doesn't add up here. So I look more from like, what is actually motivating people to click through to these things? What, like, how are they like, you know, interacting with the site? How much time on page? Like all those like other like little tiny things that like build up an, uh, an idea about, again, the target audience mm -hmm. that I'm more interested in. Yeah. <laughs> it, and, and it is, of course, a, 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 a very quickly you know, dropping graph uh, of of how many people type in any given query in in in, mm. in the world, and uh, I remember Google saying it was some years ago now, but I I wouldn't be surprised if it's still the same today. You know, that half the queries typed in in every day are unique, um, uh, and uh, uh, and certainly um, the long tail volume wise mm. ends up as you know the more important, and it and it's the high converting. So SEOs have known that for years. Um, yeah, they want to rank for insurance or, uh, or whatever their business is. They'd love to do that. That's great. But ultimately, if somebody just types in insurance, they've not given themselves enough context to uh, to um, understand what they actually want. Somebody doesn't want insurance. Imagine imagine typing in insurance really genuinely and saying, you know what? I want insurance today. You know, insurance of what? Insurance that your yeah, wife isn't kind. sleeping with somebody else, you know, insurance that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just a, it's just a, a meaningless concept on its own. And the volume <laughs> is, 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 is crazy. So, and, and mm. uh, on the other end of it, you know, uh, getting, you know, prenuptial, uh, prenuptial divorce insurance uh, is, uh, is, is, is probably highly specific Unfortunately, I haven't been there, but highly specific. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and very few people type it in. But if that's what you mm. provide, then that's the only way you're going to get money. When so you know, so so it's only yeah, got ten sites a month. Up. But if you're the only person that does a particular insurance for, you know, insuring your prenup, um, is uh, is, you know, then that's a very specific thing. It's a product mm. identifier, a, 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 a mm. differentiator in the insurance market, uh, and you don't care. If there's only ten searches a month. Well, you might care from your business planning, 
but you don't care from you do definitely want that you know that that search phrase as uh, something that you own not just that phrase but you know how do i get prenup insurance uh, and and all phrases around that you want to be an authority in prenuptial insurance i don't know if it exists mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, so well, yeah so at that about, point um, keyword volume doesn't matter at that point um, yeah, intent, yeah, yeah, intent is yeah. what matters, as Nick yeah. says. So, so we just need to get. I mean, uh, you, you mentioned that you don't really need to use all the tools. You can sort of manually build your own knowledge graph. I mean, what about just go out and hire a knowledgeable writer who's an expert in the topic, and just get them to start creating all this content and build your knowledge graph that way. Don't worry about schema. Don't worry about any other thing. Um, how far down the road will that kind of an approach go? Do you think? Uh, well, it has already got to the point where you just type the Azores into GPT-3 algorithms or GPT-4 algorithms, and it will create the whole content for you, hasn't it? So it's already gone, in yeah. a way, uh, to the to to that extreme. The problem is that that um, that you haven't given it the context of your own business at that point, and you, you'll end up creating a lot of different boilerplate content to what you had before. Um, so we're throwing out what the SEO did 12 years ago. <laughs> Nick's, Nick's SEO will go along and uh, and say say to their boss, you know, all that boilerplate that you've thrown, they would throw all that out. We're going to put all this boilerplate stuff in now from GPT. <laughs> it doesn't substitute real knowledge, you know. Uh, and I think uh, mm. I think um, if you've got a good content writer, a good content writer will be using these concepts. They might be using them um, still with a sort of a keyword mentality instead of a, an entity mentality, uh, but ultimately. Uh, you know, they they they're going to be if they're going to be experts in the field, they're going to write hopefully good content. They still need to be a good writer. I did a, a webinar yesterday and and uh, on uh, how the machines, um, you know, how to train the machines in AI. Uh, and uh, Marco Giordano, who's uh, in Switzerland, he came up with a very um, very interesting point, uh, which is SEOs don't spend enough time concentrating on sentence structure. So these mm, machines mm. are trying to extract extract these entities, but if you put mm. in a if you're in a, an intelligent person on on a particular subject, you have a tendency to write complicated sentences, and complicated sentence structures then are difficult to unpick, uh, and so they're not going to be as good at undoing those those concepts. So, I was I was delighted, Nick, when you said at the start. <laughs> Dixon reduces this to something simple or tries to, um, mm. because I think I, I have to from my own little brain. Uh, and, and I know that, you know, uh, Google's, you know, search engines have probably got the intelligence. Well, they've got no intelligence, but they probably can mm. mimic a two year old, you know, so so they, they're not at the level of of a, of, of a you know, uh, an adult that, 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 that as we understand. So we mm. need to give them concepts in very simple sentence structures, which um, mm. which a good writer might know, um, a good content may, may know the, con the, the topic. Um, but even so, um, they will have blind spots. Uh, we all have blind spots in our, mm. we, we all have bias. Um, we n absolutely know that we all mm. have bias, whether we like it or not. And we need an external force to get through that bias. Uh, and the fact that, you know, we're talking about uh, a particular topic and we don't talk about something that other people that don't have that bias realize needs to be talked about. If you don't pay attention to that, we won't pick that up. Even if we disagree mm -hmm. with it, you know, let's say uh, you know, Trump versus uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, and you're, you're out there not addressing the other person's point of view doesn't necessarily mm. give, make you an authority in the subject. If you're just going to put out your point of view, um, then you haven't necessarily covered all of the issues. Okay. Similarly, what about um, if you have a writer who's not necessarily a expert, um, thinking of EAT here, but they're not necessarily an expert in on the subject. And so the, the words and phrases, the sentence structure, don't come across like an expert who knows the, the subject matter. Mm. And how does that, that – obviously that um, – well, my feeling is that still feeds back into your semantic SEO as well. Um, but we're sort of getting down even down to two minutes left. Actually, only one minute left. So um, I think that um, perhaps – if we if we can get you know what's your what's your thirty second final thoughts, Nick Ranger? 
Oh, my 30-second final thoughts. Oh, God. I I want to, I want to, we've talked a lot about content. I want to see this methodology and this thinking be applied to products. I think that um, being able to sew and be able to understand and be able to understand, you know, what is, what is an entity and how the relationships between entities and, you know, apply that to your tags that you're applying to, to products. Because again, a lot of the time when we're seeing these shifts in, in the focus, a lot of the time we're, we're getting either t- too much drill down or we're trying to cluster too much into these product pages. And that's why we get all these kinds of other ta- like um, pages be added to a site architecture because no one has an idea how to actually order and structure this. This is, I feel like, we've talked a lot about content. A lot of people that I talk to care about revenue and content seems like a little bit you know sort of further down um the road for them so think about that there are so many wonderful ways you can be able to use this in your methodology um to to basically to basically transform the way that you work so also take it from that perspective too Mm -hmm. okay that's uh (laughs) yeah that really is uh, another perspective on that, isn't it? Yeah. What, what, um, Dixon, what do you think the, so the, the I think final my, my 30, here? my 30 seconds takeaway is, well, uh, firstly, a keyword is just a label for a thing. Uh, and you've got to remember that, you know, a word, a word can mean many things. There can be many words that describe the same thing, uh, certainly in many languages. Uh, and it's the things that are important, uh, not necessarily the way that you, uh, that you say them. Uh, and I think that uh, that's the, uh, that's the, 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 the main takeaway in thinking about it. And the, the second part of this is we're not saying we've got the ultimate way of doing search engine optimization. What we're saying is we're trying to trying to come up with a tools and methodology which plays better to um, a knowledge graph based approach. We know that Google builds its life around knowledge graph these days. When we started inventing SEO 20, 25 years ago, 1999 for me, uh, um, we did we didn't work in that in that way, and uh, and so we have to come up with these new mm. methodologies and these new approaches that are are in in harmony with the way in which search engines are working these days. And we can provide the tools, but just like any other tool, you can use this tool and completely screw yourself up. You've got to understand the reasons for it before you start using these tools. But, you know. I've you- seen it, mate. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was about oh, to see it there as well. <laughs> That's why that yeah. was my first, like, segue after your talk that question because it was just like man some people yeah. are just like they over engineer it <laughs> yeah here's like, here, here, yeah. Here's, here's, here's a new here's a new shiny thing let's go and smash it up yeah that's uh that's the oh, and don't, don't forget your lsi keywords too yeah they'll, absolutely they'll, yeah. they'll help <laughs> Amazing. So look, oh, thank you so much, uh, Nick, for being co-host and really helped to uh, bring this whole topic alive. Dixon, what do we say? This is uh, blown my mind again. I'm, I've already sent my email to get those slides. And yeah, thanks so much. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. Um, and uh, thanks for letting me go through all the slides as well. Um, I just you know, got them right in my own mind because uh, you're the first people to see those slides. So. Uh, very privileged. Thank you so and much. Everyone watching here too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank Hot you to press. all the viewers. Yeah, and yeah, please. Um, yeah, we can't wait to have another conversation soon. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you all later. Send us a tweet. <laughs>